I make thousand dollars per year working as a biomedical engineer in the United States. You've seen me make so many biomedical engineering videos because obviously I'm a biomedical engineer. I've studied at Ivy League universities and with all this experience, I have to give you guys you know, this can probably help some of you guys out there. But the one thing that I haven't addressed is how much does a biomedical engineer actually make? What kind of salary are you looking at if you're going to work in the United States? And in this video, we're going to talk about how much I make. I'm going to give you all the numbers flat out, no secrets. So let's get into this. All right, crazy Medisa family, we are in the 50K club now. Like, come on, the standards are getting pretty high, right? Um, but I can't help but notice that a ton of you guys are interested in pursuing biomedical biomedical engineering, whether you've already started with, uh, you know, a degree that you're in the middle of, or you're just thinking of exploring it and you're still in high school. But let's get a couple things out of the way. Now, even if you're interested in pursuing any degree at the end of the day, you really want to know what kind of opportunities are there for that field and how much you could earn because financial stability is an important part of becoming independent and kind of building your future. And that's super important. So why did I choose to pursue my master's at Cornell? Now, I've already spoken about, you know, the research opportunities and facilities that Cornell provided in my other biomedical engineering videos. But let's talk purely like number wise. It was a really smart financial move for me because Cornell's program was structured in such a way that it gave me a ton of industry exposure, working with professors, you know, who had their own startups and really advanced research in innovative healthcare technology, as well as amazing networking opportunity. The jobs I ended up applying to were, you know, in some way or another within the network of maybe a seminar that I attended that I found really cool, interesting. And again, Cornell provided a ton of opportunities for me to actually connect with different people in my industry. So if you're someone who's thinking about possibly pursuing a degree or just want to know what the salary and financial expectations look like in a particular field, here are a couple things that you should keep in mind. Of course, exploring your research and area of interest is one thing. But the second thing is find out if you want to go into academia or the industry. Now with any degree, whether it's computer science, electronics, software, biomedical, you have these two areas. In a research-based field, you'll spend you know, a ton of your time in the lab um, working on research that is, of course, innovative, cutting edge, but it may not necessarily turn out to be a commercial product. Whereas in the industry side of things, you're actually working on making something that an end user would use. Now, these are two very separate types of roles. So knowing which one you know, you're interested in is a good idea to start. The second thing that I would recommend that you do is that find out what the salaries of this kind of roles are, are currently. There's a good chance that, you know, five or maybe 10 years down the line, the salary may increase a little bit, but you know, the differences that you see may almost be the same. So you need to understand what you're in for and not be like very surprised by the end of your four, four year degree that, you know, hey, I thought I'd be earning way more than this. Now, this may seem a little intimidating if you aren't familiar with how to use platforms such as LinkedIn. So Skillshare is a great place to start with that. Now, Skillshare is an online learning community that offers some amazing classes on how to get the best of your LinkedIn profile, even if you're just in school. Now, I've seen numerous posts by professors of universities talking about their openings in their labs on LinkedIn and even, you know, industry based labs. So if you aren't taking advantage of this, you're really missing out. Some of the classes on Skillshare that I found really useful for building a LinkedIn profile included LinkedIn for Career Changers by Debbie Tyson and How to Build a LinkedIn Profile or LinkedIn in Marketing by Patrick Dang. Now, these are specifically useful for anyone who's just looking to get started or if you already have a profile and you're trying to like up your game in improving it, it's all there out for you. Now, the first 1000 people to sign up with the link in the description get Skillshare Premium for one month free. So if you are a biomedical engineer fresh out of college with an undergraduate degree, you can expect an average minimum salary of $47,000 per year in the US. If you're in the same boat with a master's degree with biomedical engineering, 
here and you can expect to earn anywhere in the low to high 70s, which is where I am right now. Now, things like an additional master's degree, an MBA degree, and some years of work experience may kind of get you promotions. So your salary will increase to a point where it's six figures. And now there are other factors that I want to point out here that can definitely affect your salary. The first thing is the field of biomedical engineering you're in. Now, BME is a very vast field. Now, whether you're in regulatory or medical devices or molecular biology or genetics or just therapeutics or diagnostics, all these different areas can really like play around with the salary that you can expect. The second thing that I want to point out is depending on which city you're actually located in, your salary can vary a lot. Like someone, for example, doing the same job that I do in California may earn close to $150,000, whereas in upstate New York or maybe central um, US, the salary may be, you know, closer to a hundred grand. This is to take into account living expenses of those states and also the fact that in general, things like housing, food, gas, all these things are more expensive in bigger cities. Now, these two things that is in field specialization and city variables play a huge factor no matter which degree you're pursuing, not just biomedical engineering. So definitely keep these two things in mind. So before I end this video, let's talk about the 50,000 subscriber giveaway question for this video. Uh, comment down below with the hashtag incognito blueprints. What is your dream city to work in and what work do you want to do? I want to know, you know, don't forget to leave the hashtag in the comments and the 50k subscriber giveaway is on. So make sure you're commenting on every video. If you aren't subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and I will see you guys in the next one.